In this video, you will learn how to use the components that you have written in the previous exercise. To do so, let's return to Cold Fusion Builder. And the first page that I will use here is the contact us.cfm. So this is a very simple page. You have a query right here at the top of the page that retrieves some data from the database. And then you use that data right here in a CF output to print out that data on the page. What I will do now is delete that query because now the query that I want to use is located in the page service.cfc component. So here the first thing that I will do is a CF set tag and I will use that tag to create a new variable and I will call that variable page service. So this variable will be local to this page. Remember that when you don't specify a scope, that variable is located in the variable scope that is local to the page. And I will make that variable equal to the create object function of Cold Fusion. Now you can see that I can use that create object function in a variety of different situations. I can use create object to create a Java object, a com object, a web service. What I want to do is to create an object of type component. So I will choose that last scenario here and you see that it comes with two arguments. The first argument is the type of object that I want to create, in this case a component. And here I must supply the component name, which is actually the dot notation of the path to the component. So in this case, I want to use the component which is in the CF training folder dot components dot page service. And remember, this is the dot notation to the page service.cfc file, which is in the components folder. So this explains the components dot page service. And also that components folder is in the CF training folder because that path starts at the root of the ColdFusion server. So now that I have this variable, let's dump it to see how it looks like. So let's use CF dump. And I will dump now the following variable. It's going to be here the page service. Now, when I will run the page, I will have an error. And that is fine because if you take a look here, I try to output something that comes from the RS page query, but I have deleted that query. So these two lines of code here will generate an error, but this is not really a big problem for what I want to show you. Because if I run that page in the browser, you see that before the error occurs, I have this component that is dumped on the page and you see that all the methods of the component, and in this case I have just one method, which is the getPageById method, is now available to the page through that page service variable that I just created. So now let's return to ColdFusion Builder. And right below this line of code that creates an instance of the page service component, I will first remove the CF dump. And I will recreate that RS page variable using a second CF set. So RS page. And I will make that equal to page service dot get page by ID. You see, I use the method get page by ID, which is inside of the page service variable. And you know that the page service variable is actually an instance of the page service component. And I pass the ID number of the page that I want to print out on this file, which is page ID number six. Now, if I run the page again, it should be fine. So you see that the contact page indeed is displayed correctly. And if I take a look at the debug output here, you see that the CFC has been instantiated and the getPageID method has been used with an argument of six. So we have retrieved here the page whose ID number is number six from the database. We have stored that in the RS page variable. Then we use that RS page variable to display the page. If it works for the contact us page, let's copy those two lines of code. And I will repeat that procedure on the sitemap.cfm. So I will replace that query 
with my two lines of code here but the only difference is that I call page ID number 5 instead of 6 so let's save and run that page to check it out it looks okay so let's now use that on we play for you which is this one okay so once again I replace the query with my two lines of code to instantiate the component and then to call the get page by ID method to retrieve this time page ID number 3 from the database and it works again you see that I check all the pages as I replace them now for the come play with us page be careful here to remove the right query because we have a form processing script here with some more queries you see here for example that insert query this is not of course the one that you want to change the one that you want to change is that one so get page content for page ID number five so I replace that query with my two lines of code and here I call page ID number four so let's take a look at this page now you see that the core of the page displays correctly here on the left side all right two more to go the next one is the director.cfm in this case I can simply remove that CF include replace it by my two lines of code and here I call page ID number one so let's remove that line of code as well I save and run that page and you see that the director.cfm page displays correctly and once again if I take a look at the debug output you see that I call that get page by ID method with the argument number one so I retrieve page number one from the database and the last one to do here is history.cfm and once again I can remove those two lines of code replace them by the instantiation of my component and here I call page ID number two and once again it works so here I have used my method on one two three four five six different pages so instead of writing six times pretty much the same query I write the query only one time in the component and I reuse that piece of code on all my pages all right let's do some housekeeping first I will close all those files here in ColdFusion Builder and then of course in my includes folder which is right here this file myfunctions.cfm is no longer needed remember it contains the query that is now in the component so I can simply right click on the file and delete it we do not need that file anymore now there are some more things to do because we also have three more components let's take a look at the event service component and I will use that event service component on the agenda.cfm page so here the first thing that I will do of course is create a variable with CF set and I will call that variable events service and I will make that equal to the create object function of cold fusion the create object to create a component right here and here the component name it's going to be cf training dot components dot events service so with that line of code remember that I'm creating an instance of the event service.cfc component which is in the components folder and that components folder is itself in the CF training folder of the web root of ColdFusion. Now that the component is available to the page, all the methods defined in that component are also available to the page. And if I take a look at the event service component, I have two methods, the get event by ID and the get current events method. So let's return to agenda.cfm here to output a single event of the agenda if the url.eventid is defined in the url what i will do i will recreate that rs single event variable here using a cf set tag so let's create that rs single event variable but this time i will make it equal to events service dot get event by id and the value of the argument will be the dynamic value url.event 
ID. Let's do the same here below that second comment. I'll put the upcoming event table if URL.eventID is not defined. So I will recreate that RS current events variable here using another CF set tag. So here I create a variable called RS current events and I make it equal to the event service dot get current events. So I call the second method of the same object. You see that I just instantiate the object once and then I can call different methods of that object, of course, without re-instantiating the object all the time. So now if I save and run the agenda page, you see that the table with upcoming events display correctly. And if I click on read more, now I can access each of those events. You can see that using actually three lines of code, one to instantiate the component, a second one to retrieve a single event, and a third one here to retrieve all the events from the database. So you see, those pages are very simple now, very easy to read, because all the logic takes place in the component. So you know enough to instantiate components, and you know how to use the methods of the components that you have instantiated. You will now continue this procedure on your own in the next exercise. The step-by-step -step instructions can be found in the PDF file whose name is now on your screen. In the exercise, you will use the new service.cfc component on the news.cfm page and the user service.cfc component on the complaywithus.cfm and on the profile.cfm pages. Take your time once again to do those exercises correctly. The best way to get used to those procedures is to do them by yourself and I will meet you in the next chapter in a couple of minutes.